Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of Champions League qualification and preview of the draw in a way as well. Well, it was two very exciting evenings, I gotta say. Um, high drama on Tuesday, especially in Belgrade and maybe not as dramatic on Wednesday. However, at one point it really looked like all three uh, games could very well go into overtime. And the other thing I have to say, uh, a real big theme here were defensive errors that uh, decided quite a few uh, ties there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start now out with reviewing the um, uh, games. Then we look at how do the pots for the draw uh, shake up. And then we, of course, you see already in the background, uh, first time full Champions League background. Uh, we look, of course, who are the favorites to win it all. I would say we'll start in Belgrade. What a crazy game that was. And you know, I again, uh, both evenings I have been working here on my lab, laptop while, uh, while the um, uh, games were on. So uh, I, I wasn't full, full, full involved watching, but simply the drama of that game just was enthralling uh, in so many ways. I mean, Maccabi having a 3 2 lead, going into this game in Belgrade, and Jervena Zvezda just going all over them. And scoring the goals through uh, Pesic and then when Ivanic made it 2-0, you really thought this is going to be a cakewalk for uh, Jervena Svesta. Or Red Star, but I like to call it Jervena Svesta. Uh, and really, absolutely, uh, the, you know, the fans, everyone was behind it. However, it all kind of imploded right before the half when uh, Dragovic caused a penalty with a handball. The penalty is then taken by uh, Haziza. Penalty is saved. Red Star have the ball. And then Sundgren takes it off from off them and sh makes uh, unleashes a shot really, really hard, hard shot that swerves a little bit and swerves right around Dragovic into the net. Goalie doesn't look good, but he saw it very, 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 very late. And that's the goal that changed the game because suddenly we are looking into overtime. Uh, the Serbs are a little bit more nervous over the whole whole thing, and Maccabi thinks we have now a chance. We've quieted the stadium a teeny bit. And actually, in the second half, it was more Maccabi Haifa who had the better of the game and the better chances. Both teams, Adrivas was in the first half, Maccabi Haifa in the second half, hit the woodwork. However, the way that the goal came that decided it all was really, really um, unfortunate because of, it was a free kick from Atili in and Pavkov wants to clear it and just lift it over the goalkeeper into the net. And on goal, then of course there have been chance uh, they tried to push everything forward but it was not to be. Dramatic evening in Belgrade, ending very uh, better for Maccabi Haifa from Israel. Um, I'm wearing Benfica. Benfica, I think, in this playoff round has been the most impressive team. Dynamo Kiev is not a weak team by any means. However, the way Benfica dominated them uh, tells, tells me that they are a good step above everyone else that had to go through the qualification. Uh, Toy toyed around with it as soon as Otamendi made, made it 1 0. Uh, it was clear, game is down there, doesn't Rafa Silva and Neres before they have 3-0. It could have been more, but I think they played it uh, a little bit slower then. Um, Roger Schmidt, who had actually, who failed with PSV uh, against Benfica last year, this hurdle, um, kind of held Benfica back. It was really nice to see the scene af af afterwards with Lucesco, uh, how they were kind of, you know... Um, talking to each other in very, very friend, 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 friend terms, so yeah. Uh, another uh, game that was decided by defensive error was uh, Victoria Pilsen against Karabakh. Uh, it was a kind of a tight game, um, but where Victoria Pilsen had maybe the um, first push forward, but then uh, Karabakh got the game under control and even took Kukli really through Ozobic and really did not look in danger at all. This looked like a cakewalk for, for, for them because uh, Pilsen had no idea what Kult could do. The only thing I think they brought a certain Clement on for Sikora. How it was in a defensive era where a ball is uh, played out by, uh, I think, by a goalkeeper that, that uh, is lost there and then from a very acute angle, uh, Kopic puts it in, in, in the internet, changing the dynamics of the game and then Clement 
get the winner. Uh, a game, honestly, that Victoria Pilsen in the end probably deserved to win, to, 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 but at, at first, you know, when, when we were looking for most of the game, it was not really happening for them. Moving on into Wednesday's action. So yesterday um, we had Trabzonspor against Copenhagen. Really, a Trabzonspor uh, tried to dominate the game, tried to create chances, but they just couldn't get, uh, go past a mad Ryan. I mean, he saved quite, 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 quite a few chances. And then Copenhagen also had a few on the counter, but it was definitely Trabzonspor who dominated that game. However, with a solid, solid, solid defense, the Danes actually took a little bit the heat out of the entire game. And so in the end, it came to nothing. Um, and yeah, Copenhagen is back in the Champions League and Trabzonspor uh, is left reeling, especially with the few Danes that played for, for them, which I found a very intriguing match up there. Um, uh, I really thought Trabzon will get the, the goal at uh, one point, but it didn't go to overtime. A game that did go over them was the one in Zagreb, and they were almost a similar story like in Belgrade, but this time the former Yugoslav team uh, prevailed there. And it didn't look li li like that for uh, the most time of the first uh, half, because Orsic got the goal very early on. Uh, they created chances, but it was not really on, 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 on the field. And then Petkovic, with probably the goal of the round, uh, you know, gets the ball, uh, stops it, and then... Um, um, a scissor, uh, no, uh, bicycle kicks it, a bicycle kick into it, it into the net. The weird thing is, for almost the rest of the game, they did not shoot on goal any, anymore. In the second half, Bode made the right changes, got the game under control, and then got even through uh, Grombeck a very deserved goal that would send them into overtime. And in overtime, you could see how Dinamo are really uh, nervous again um, and could not string passes to, together. Although they, I would argue they are the, um, you know, technically more gifted team. However, was Bode, who had that game squarely under, under control, not necessarily uh, threatening to score, but they had the game under control, but it did not happen. And it was a defensive error again that sees then um, Drimic run onto goal. And he makes it in the 117th minute. And it came a little bit out of nowhere. Of course, Bode then commits numbers forward. And then again, uh, it's Drimic and uh, Bok, uh, Bochkai, who uh, are then, you know, within the own half already clear on, on, on goal, make, make it 4 1, and Dinamo are through. And then the biggest uh, matchup by name in, in a way, although Benfica Dinamo also not that bad. Um, was PSV against Rangers, where I gotta say Rangers really did one here on uh, PSV. They took the right uh, lessons from the first leg, where PSV largely don't, 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 not dominated, but um, again, defensive errors undid them, and it was happening here, 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 here too. Whenever PSV tried, uh, Rangers had the answer for that. They uh, kept it tight, they kept it compact, and they were uh, very efficient and they pressed up high, uh, I think it was Tillman onto Ramalio, goalie plays. It was very similar to, to, to the uh, second goal that Brentford scored against United. That the goalie plays out to Ramalio, who is under, under, under pressure, lo lo lose the ball. Uh, Tillman plays it to Jolak, who puts it into in, in, in the net. And then Rangers really kept it tight and played it home. And so we have two Scottish teams now in the group stage of the Champions League and PSV again failing at this last hurdle in kind of dramatic circumstances. I do feel a teeny bit bad for them because they are a really, really good side. On the other side, I also would have felt for, uh, bad for Rangers not making, given that they had this great run in Europe last season. So yeah, um, it was kind of a give or take matchup. With all that, we are now ready to look at the pots of uh, the draw that will be ha happening this afternoon or evening 
at six o'clock Central European time. Of course, they will drag it out again and then uh, we'll get the draw probably 15 or 20 minutes later after that. In any case, in pot one, we have, of course, the two European champions from uh, last season, Real Madrid and Eindhoven Frankfurt. Yes, Roma won the conference, but that only gives Gare ge to the Europa League. And then, um, since Real Madrid also became cha uh, Spanish champion champions, we have Manchester City, Milan, uh, Bayern, PSG, Porto and Ajax. Those are the champions from the next best countries. I think so. We, uh, I think if... Uh, it would be also a champion that would have won the Europa League, which was not possible. Um, uh, Salzburg would have made it into pot one as well, because Austria was, I think, the eighth best league there. Any case, that's beside the point. Then the pots are arranged by the club coefficient. So we have pot two, which arguably is, an, well, is a stronger one or an equally strong one. Uh, I, w I would say equally strong. Liverpool, Chelsea, Barcelona, Juve, Atletico, Sevilla, Leipzig and Spain. Spurs, pot three has Dortmund, which surprised me, as well as Inter Napoli uh, and Benfica, who made a quarterfinal. It's also the Salzburg, Schachter, Sporting, and Leverkusen. And then pot four are most teams that have qual qualified through the playoffs um, Rangers, Zagreb, Copenhagen, um, Pilsen, and Maccabi Haifa. Benfica made it in pot three. And we already had in there OM uh, with uh, Club Bruges in there, and we had Celtic in there. So we have two Scottish teams as I said already, in the Champions League. Of course, with the draw, we have the usual restrictions, no two teams from the same country. Um, now, one could make up uh, the best groups of all so ever. I mean, of course, a Real Madrid, Liverpool, uh, Dortmund Rangers group would be uh, brilliant, but it's not going to happen this way. Um, if I look now, since I'm wearing Milan from Milan's perspective, I honestly have to tell you it's a really really tough choice i think from pot two i would rather have an atletico or in sevilla uh if i had the choice from pot three uh a leverkusen looks good not necessarily a portugal team maybe Schachter, even salzburg i don't know um tough 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 could be a dortmund too let's see and from pot four honestly it's really hard but i for some reason i want to have marseille just for old time's sake, uh, but you know, it is a really, really, it's not easy to say, and especially Milan, uh, of all the teams that I'm Paul Popper, but one, if they wouldn't become champions, they would be still be in pot four because they, their club coefficient is not good enough. So in that sense, they are outsiders. How much outsiders? We're looking now at the current favorites based on, again, the three ratings that I'm using, which is the SPI by 538. We have the club ELO rating and I collected odds from bookmakers and averaged them out. So aggregating all these into a rating. The top three favorites are the ones that are up top here. Manchester City, Liverpool and Bayern Munich in that order. Uh, of course, it plays also into it um, the seeding uh, in the pots. Uh, so uh, it's not a straight up that uh, best first, second, best second. Although in this case, it works out this way. You see it especially uh, Milan is kind of, there is definitely above Juve, uh, Juventus, Leipzig and, and so on. Ajax also enjoys a fair good advantage just being in pot one uh, there. So yeah, but if I look at the favorites, I would say the top five realistically. So there's a City, Liverpool, Bayern, Real Madrid and PSG. Starting with Barcelona, I would say all these teams have outside chances. Uh, you might want to go and say up until Spurs, those are outsiders and the rest. Maybe a semi-final would be already a deep run for them. But it's all before the draw. Now the fun begins, because now is the question, how will it all look like after the draw? And who are the winners and losers? And I will uh, try to compile that and probably you will have this video either this evening or, or, or tomorrow morning. In any case, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below what you thought about the qualification games and what would be your uh, group that you want to see. Um, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.